Hey guys, what is going on? This is WrestleMania back with another episode. It's Friday the 13th, but will tonight's SmackDown prove lucky or unlucky for viewers? Join us now as WrestleMania looks at the 13th August edition of the Blue Brand, as well as the wildest wrestling news and rumors you need to know, including a new world champion is crowned, how often will CM Punk wrestle in AEW, ECW reunion in AEW, and more. As always, WrestleMania won't recap the show, but provide you with the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. The Good It's good to be the king and the champ. Congratulations to King Shinsuke, whose winning ways continue as he captured the Intercontinental Championship from Apollo Crews. Shinsuke has become the anti-Corbin, a wrestler who can seemingly do no wrong, whether it's capturing Corbin's crown or winning his second IC strap. Let's hope the WWE does something better with this run than they did with the King of Strong Style's first reign, where he held the belt for 201 days but seemed to defend it less than a handful of times. While it's refreshing to see the WWE giving the ring general Nakamura an Intercontinental Championship reign, it's difficult to think of a better wrestler who defines the term workhorse, there's no telling what's next, as SmackDown's secondary title has been an afterthought for too long. Let's just hope Cruz doesn't slide down the card into obscurity. Edge and Rollins Burn It Down Speaking of brilliant build-ups, the Edge vs. Seth Rollins storyline seems to get better every week, as this time around, Rollins ran a video proving his boast to be better than Edge and dismissing the Rated R Superstars claim that Rollins is Edge Light. Rollins also brought up the 2014 angle where he nearly ended Edge's career when he threatened to deliver a curb stomp to Edge's neck on the Money in the Bank briefcase, telling fans that they wouldn't have the Edge vs. Rollins SummerSlam match if it wasn't for Rollins' mercy. With one week to go before SummerSlam, WrestleMania can't wait to see what the final build-up is on the Go Home episode of SmackDown. This match seems to be a can't-miss affair, and WrestleMania hopes WWE doesn't ruin it with a poorly planned ending. We are confident they won't, but with the WWE, nothing should be ruled out. A winning formula? Do less matches equal more quality? That was definitely the case tonight as SmackDown seemed to focus on a handful of high-quality matches rather than filling the show with throwaway matches. While the blue brand is generally much better at avoiding filler as opposed to Raw, every one of tonight's matches were the kind of bout that work-rate fans could enjoy but which all furthered storylines, including Baron Corbin's ongoing woes, the slowly simmering tension between Rey and Dominic Mysterio, and the feud between the Alpha Academy and the Street Profits. Should the WWE focus on quality versus quantity when it comes to matches? That seems to be the winning formula for WWE pay-per-views, so why not its TV shows? Baron Bags the Briefcase Is there anything that Baron Corbin won't do to get out of the gutter? The down-and-out superstar has lost everything and sunk to new lows tonight, stealing Big E's Money in the Bank briefcase before making a hasty exit. What's next for Corbin remains to be seen, but knowing the WWE's nebulous rules when it comes to the briefcase, there's no telling whether Corbin could become Mr. Money in the Bank. Whatever happens, Corbin's current gimmick is perfect and his best work yet. Cena Slashes Roman John Cena has been tearing up the microphone of late during his promos against Roman Reigns, and tonight's showdown was no different, with both men taking their trash-talking to a new level. After an initial showdown, Roman laid into the 16-time world champion, telling Cena, 20 years of missionary might have been good for you, but it wasn't good enough for Nikki Bella. However, Cena buried Reigns, shocking Reigns and the fans with an unexpected reference. You want a compelling story? You want to criticize me by bringing up dick jokes and sexual positions and a breakup I have? You haven't been embarrassed. You've been protected. That pretty face. Those giant bars of soap you got for teeth. You've been protected, Roman. You've been protected by the shield. Hell, you almost ruined Seth Rollins. You ran Dean Ambrose out of WWE. You've had 10 whole years, 5 WrestleMania main events, Paul Heyman in your corner, 2 lackeys to do your dirty work. You've had the protection of the system, and it isn't working. You should be embarrassed." Cena even joked about winning the belt and walking out with it, a comment that some fans saw as an allusion to CM Punk, whose storyline exit from the WWE in 2011 where he defeated John Cena for the WWE Championship, kayfabe leaving the company with it. 
credit the WWE for letting Cena name drop Ambrose and making this promo feel natural rather than canned. According to Ringside News' Steve Carter, Michael Kirschenbaum wrote the segment, and it's unclear if Cena and Reigns even saw each other beforehand because there was no rehearsal. While John Cena is no longer the doctor of thugonomics, his promos have the same edge as he did early on in his career, something which has fans even more eager to see him and Reigns throw down at SummerSlam. Fans have to wonder what Vince thought when Cena uttered those lines. The Bad Balling on Balor? Where was Finn Balor? Has he joined Raw? Asuka in the Phantom Zone? Balor looked to be off to a great start after he returned to SmackDown a few weeks back, apparently jumping right into a main event program with Universal Champion Roman Reigns. However, is it possible the fans killed his push by chanting Cena last week, convincing WWE that no one cares about Finn? Is Finn finished? WrestleMania certainly hopes not, and perhaps fans will see him back in the spotlight after the summer of Cena. No women's wrestling this week? Although SmackDown featured a main event slot contract signing between SmackDown women's champion Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks, there were no women's matches on tonight's show, another reminder of how female talent is scarce on SmackDown. The contract signing was a good segment and also gave Zelina Vega and Carmella a spot on the show. Are they going to join forces with Sasha Banks, or is this an alliance of convenience with all three women wanting Belair's belt? It's difficult to say whether it was better not featuring a women's match than having a meaningless filler match. The Downright Ugly Nothing ugly as tonight's SmackDown was a solid show with a near-perfect blend of promos, angles, and matches. Considering the talent on SmackDown, there really is no need for the blue brand to produce anything but excellent shows and it'll be interesting to see what the go-home for SummerSlam is like. News and new Impact World Champion Topping today's news is the crowning of a new world champion. Congratulations to Christian Cage who defeated Kenny Omega for the Impact Wrestling World Championship during the debut episode of AEW's new cable program, Rampage. Christian discussed his win after the show. I'm pretty beat up, but it's a pretty surreal moment to be honest with you. I kind of put myself behind the eight ball a little bit where I said that I was gonna, without a doubt, beat Kenny for the Impact Championship and I was gonna be in the Impact Zone this coming week and I would look like pretty much an idiot if I didn't follow through on that, right? As any true fan of Captain Charisma knows, Cage has a history with Impact going back to its days as TNA Wrestling when he held the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Christian is going to be a busy man as he's scheduled to defend the Impact World title against Brian Myers on 20th August and is challenging Kenny Omega for the AEW World Championship at 5th September's All Out Pay-Per-View. Now that Christian is World Champion, expect to see him more often in Impact. How often will CM Punk work in AEW? How often is CM Punk going to wrestle in AEW? According to Ringside News, not only is Punk expected to appear nearly every week, but CM Punk will wrestle for AEW 10 to 12 times a year. That's the current deal, but he could always agree to wrestle more often. Punk generally does what he wants to do. Do you plan on watching AEW's 20th August Rampage, the date in which Punk is supposed to debut? Let us know in the comments below. Grudge Match Added to SummerSlam Looks like the ongoing war between Drew McIntyre and Jinder Mahal is heading to pay-per-view as the WWE announced that the two will clash at SummerSlam. Currently, there are six title matches and the Seth Rollins vs. Edge bout booked for next Saturday's show. Baron Corbin being repackaged? It looks like fans may be on the verge of seeing a new character for SmackDown superstar Baron Corbin. Corbin, whose fall from grace has been well documented following the loss of his crown to Shinsuke Nakamura, has been entertaining fans with his weekly woes. As reported several weeks back, WWE trademarked Happy Corbin, which has some believing that things are going to turn around. Wrestling News' Paul Davis believes that WWE may be revisiting a classic WCW angle from the 90s. It looks like they're doing something similar to the Diamond Dallas Page angle from the 90s. Page was portrayed as homeless and down on his luck, but he slowly climbed up the ladder and became a top star. ECW Reunion at Rampage Last but not least, Rampage featured a number of surprises, including a backstage reunion of ECW alumni, 
Ringside News is reporting that Tommy Dreamer, Shane Douglas, Jerry Lynn, Jeff Jones, and Taz all posed together backstage at AEW Rampage for a great photo op. No word on whether anyone was put through any tables in catering. Well guys, there you have it, the good, the bad, and the downright ugly from the 13th August Smackdown, along with the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know in wrestling. Be sure to leave your comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time for some more wrestling content.